then I went up on the hillside and then I uh, remembered Kate's turning point to dream, the alleged dream that she called to Paiva, the liaison, um, when Jerry was in Washington, D.C., uh, about Maddie being hidden on a hillside overlooking a beach in Praia de Luz. And I thought, hey, what is this? Are you trying to, you know, have the police find her? Uh, and then Jerry's response when he came back, uh, he was in court in Lisbon, then he was alone on, on camera. And he said, it's not true that Kate had a dream that she was buried somewhere. He used that word. And then I thought, wow, he's uh, kind of confirming that that hillside might be very interesting. And uh, I went up that hillside and I had this revelation about their, their jogging. You know, it was made fun of them. You know, you're a sportsman, you know how it's important to work out and you want to do that. But when you lose a child, uh, you can't eat, you can't sleep, and you definitely can't play tennis or go for a jog. Uh, that's just my opinion. But uh, the point was that uh, they were jogging on the hillside and they made sure that everybody knew by that photo. They had a photo shoot, I think on May 19th, 7 a.m. in the morning, where you see the backdrop, you see the church. So everybody knows where they're jogging. And then I thought, this is brilliant. If they hid her there, in the future, they could always go back and nobody would suspect anything why they were there. And then something peculiar uh, was uh, written by Jerry on the blog, his blog. He, he uh, talked about the jog from apartment 5A um, where they ran to the top of the hillside to the landmark and he called it a 19 minutes and they didn't stop. And then I thought, well, that's peculiar. Nobody cares how much time it takes to run there. And then... Uh, I actually wanted to check for myself. I was kind of bad shape, overweight, but I did it in less than 12 minutes. So I thought that was strange, you know, because they would beat me on anything past the half a mile. And I was walking on the steep parts, but they are runners, you know. And um, so there was something about that hillside that, that really stuck out. So I decided to do a methodical survey on the hill. Where would I do it, given I was jogging there or playing golf? And, um, and this fits also this hillside theory with uh, Mark Harrison, the former Scotland Yard superstar. Uh, he was there for a week with Mr. Amaral, the first detective. And uh, he, um, uh, I think maybe his, his job was to figure out where would somebody hide something uh, in the area. And that was between the golf course on top of that cliff um, and the town. So, and then you had the South African there with the device and he also marked that area. So, um, but I started with clean sheets and uh, I, I found some certain areas there that uh, could be plausible. And uh, I had a really extreme approach really, because I was looking for a grave. And this has to do with profiling of a mother losing a child. And especially if potentially there is a SA involved and uh, whether she knew or not, but what could she do after the child has passed is maybe giving her a more beautiful grave than we could dream of. That was my insane approach. And uh, when you have a spot or a grave on that hillside um, and the mother returning so many times per year um, alone, uh, I thought that it would be plausible to think that she would romanticize this in a, in, in a way by placing symbols there. So I was looking for very subtle symbols there, like a heart, pink flowers, uh, the letter M. And the weird thing was that in this uh, area too, um, I found all of the above. And then I put up a camera there and then boom, here comes Jerry McCann past. What are the chances? So um, I had tried to get in contact with Amaral um, for about eight months before that. But uh, after I had uh, this camera, uh, this recording of this person walking past this uh, spot one, I call it, with the symbols, I knew that uh, I could go solo and do this on my own by starting a cat and mouse game with anonymous emails to them. Not about where, but that it might have been discovered just to create some uh, uh, stormy waters and uh, sleepless nights to have them come back and narrow down the area. So I put up several cameras there and eventually um, a friend of his showed up. So, uh, and after that, I have uh, both of them showing up and I waited a week 
I tried to have actually him come and uh, remove the remains, but they didn't. But they showed up later, and I have some recordings there that are very interesting. Um, so uh, yeah, was it's, that the start of all? For that you? was the start of all, and and I my uh, idea was that there would never be a book unless I had a find, you know, um, and it's. it's dangerous to program yourself telling yourself something because it, it becomes like concrete you know um but then friends of mine told me about the that this story is something you have to tell i mean even if you make it like a fiction or something but uh and i was going to move to spain uh and uh i even considered italy but then i actually very strangely uh, two days later i bought an apartment in Praia de Luz. i didn't want to be that crazy guy you know going and digging and stuff uh, even though the the police, the PJ, Policia Judiciaria, the criminal police, uh, they actually said it would be easier if you went and checked. So I started a little check digging, and this is what um, I saw some reaction to that, and um, on the video by Jerry, and um, I thought I could play on that, and that's why I started this game of uh, trying to narrow it down and get some reactions, and. Uh, so it's very strange for me because if she wasn't there, they didn't put her there, why would they come? Why would they react? They would tell Operation Grange, Scotland Yard, and they would tell Policia Judiciaria, and then they would tell me, did you send more emails, you know? And um, so that didn't happen. And instead they sent friends, you know, probably because of fear um, of maybe being trapped because I confused them with those emails, I can tell you that. So the emails, did you message Jerry? Yeah, well, he showed up, I put a camera where I had the symbols, and after he noticed something had been done there, basically me test drilling, and the police didn't want to meet me. So I thought, what would I do? And then I suggested to my lawyer, you know, say, hey, maybe I should send some emails and try to trick him to come and dig up the body. I mean, the remains. So I did, and uh, the first, Email was basically just uh, read carefully. It was kind of cryptic, but it was, uh, as you noticed, it's about to be discovered. We can delay them a week and that's it. And then I was hoping he would panic and come and try to remove it. And I waited for him in the, in the bush for a week, in the, in the night, in the dark, you know, with the, the whole shabam, you know, night vision, different gear. Did Jerry show up at night? Time? No, he didn't. But they did uh, show up uh, two weeks later. He and uh, Kate. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Also, you've sent Jerry McCann an email to say you're about to be. It's about to be d discovered. Yeah. And because I had to play on to, that. And he to... showed up to the spot where you think Madeline's buried. Yeah. And after that, when they showed up, I had to put up more cameras because I saw there were. They had interest higher up. They were rushing by spot one. And then uh, I had to, you know, try to narrow down the area because I knew she was in the area. Even in the presentation to the PJ, I said that if she's not at spot one, it had become a memorial. Maybe it was their first choice, Kate's choice, when she was running on the hill with her crumbled photo of Maddie in her hands and she felt relieved when she got back home. She had found the spot. That's my interpretation of that in her diary and book. Um, yeah, so it kept going with these... Uh, this game and it uh, succeeded.